Hey, Mr. P here. This is a special accessory video to our 5.1 uh, Evidence for Evolution kind of series. Uh, we're going to talk specifically about peppered moth uh, within kind of a case study context. We're going to talk about why it's included as evidence for evolution uh, because it's, it's a pretty straightforward case study and actually kind of paints a picture as to why organisms change uh, or adapt to a particular environment via natural selection. Uh, and then how that natural selection really can quickly lead to uh, evolution of the population as a whole. And so let's get started. Uh, the peppered moth actually is an organism much like other organisms that exhibit this idea of transient polymorphism, um, which can be easily represented by this flower down here, um, as well as the peppered moth. But um, basically what transient poly polymorphism is is that within many populations of uh, particular species on the planet there is a variety of uh, versions or a variety of phenotypes that one can actually experience uh, or one can actually observe uh, and most of the time these are the result of mutation uh, specifically and we've talked in depth about mutations in the past but mutations are just random changes in the organism's DNA and so if those, those changes change a particular section of the DNA, then it's ultimately going to change the protein product, and that can have a big, uh, big effect on the particular uh, color distribution of the organism or the variety, um, body shape, body size changes as well. Uh, but when there are different versions of a particular species, those are polymorphisms, and the idea of transient polymorphism really just states that because of these polymorphisms within a species, certain populations or certain individuals within a population are going to just naturally kind of gravitate towards the, the increased fitness side of the spectrum, and some are going to try gravitate towards the lower end or the, the less uh, fit of that particular uh, continuum. So... We're going to talk about the peppered moth through the lens of this transient polymorphism. So know that there are, much like other populations or within other populations, there are in fact variations among populations of this peppered moth. Okay, And it's those specific versions that really gave this idea of, uh, or really strengthened the idea of evolution or, or the piece of evidence that suggests that evolution is in fact um, verified okay so within a population there are typically two versions of this peppered moth there might be slight deviations within each of these particular phenotypes but the wild type population okay the normal occurring or the normally occurring population or the normally occurring variety within a population is this kind of white and black speckled peppered moth. That's why it's called peppered, okay? It is black speckled, and the reason that this particular variety has kind of gravitated to the most uh, fit is because the natural environment by which this organism lives is uh, kind of the lichen-rich, kind of speckly, um, tree trunks or bark on the tree trunks within its natural range and so you can see that while this organism is resting during the day because it is nocturnal okay these peppered moths much like other moths are nocturnal you typically see them around your lights at night um, they have to rest like other organisms and they rest on the trunks of these particular trees that are heavily populated with lichen and so uh, the camouflage, the normal camouflage that has really evolved on these particular populations really exhibits a large degree of similarity with the lichens on the trunk of the tree. Okay, uh, so that is the natural version. Well, there is a different variety that came about as the result of a mutation. Okay, there is a rare mutation that creates this melanic form, which is a uh, an increased rate of production of melanin. Melanin is the pigment, just like the pigment in our skin, that gives these particular moths a really dark color. The mutation generally affects only about 1% of the population. Um, 
But in normally occurring uh, lichens in non-polluted areas, this black version would be a detriment to the success of this particular moth. And so the moth population um, would not really establish itself because the 1% that is inheriting this particular uh, phenotype is not going to be allowed an increased fitness and therefore not reproducing and therefore not trying, you know, it's not very easily or readily replacing itself with more and so the population can't be established. Okay, however, in areas where the air pollution was high, this particular melanic form skyrocketed in popularity um, and that's because the environment changed. The pollution that was put out as the result of increased industry was killing the lichens. It was covering the vegetation. It was uh, covering or killing out the natural camouflage that these peppered moths have. And it was also covering everything in this black soot. And so you can see that if the background is being completely caked with black soot, one might easily understand that the black form of moth is now going to be more successful in uh, not only surviving but reproducing and so this initial one percent of the population was now becoming the most fit and the initial 99 percent was coming less fit uh, and so we flipped the fitness the more fit population was becoming less fit the less fit population was becoming more fit, and so we saw a switch in the natural selection via predation just based on camouflage, okay? This would be the normal environment. You can see that the normal wild type phenotype is much more successful at camouflaging than this melanic form, and so the 1% of the population that was inheriting this melanic form was just really quickly being killed by predation because they could not physically hide themselves as well as their other non-melanic form uh, populations. But when the environment changed and the, uh, the tree trunk and the lichens were killed out and covered with this black soot, now all of a sudden this wild type phenotype was at a great disadvantage. They were the ones being uh, affected by predation. They were the ones being killed. And this 1% melanic form was increasing in fitness and because they were increasing, they were reproducing, they were producing more offspring, their offspring were more successful. And so you can see that an initial 1% really did skyrocket and become the, uh, the, the majority really quickly. When we look at the phenotype distribution, London, which uh, obviously is probably one of the biggest populated or the, the largest populated areas with the prevailing winds, um, a lot of the industry was happening kind of down here and up along this coast. And so uh, due to the increased industry that was happening in London at the time, just like in the U.S. or around the world at the time, uh, we were producing a large portion of smog. Uh, the Industrial Revolution was happening. Uh, large production of pop or polluted particulates were entering the air. It was causing all of the vegetation up along this eastern coast of Great Britain to be completely caked with soot. And so you can see really quickly that the melanic form, uh, which these are all pie charts, okay? So the ones that are kind of completely filled in with black or the majority of the pie chart filled in black, um, the majority of, of the peppered moths that were being observed or being sampled at the time were in fact black. And the, the wild type white kind of speckled pepper phenotype was really the minority in places where the pollution wasn't reaching, okay, because the prevailing winds were pushing all the pollution this way. In areas where these uh, these environments were staying kind of pristine and non-polluted, uh, the populations didn't switch at all because the natural version or the natural phenotype was in in it, it was still fit, or the the melanic form never had the ability to establish itself, okay. Um, once the pollution had actually been uh, once we had kind of a handle on the pollution and we started to increase our environmental protection policies and uh, and people started advocating for the reduction of pollution we actually are starting to see these populations reverse okay the melanic form is dying out um, just due to natural selection the wild type is coming back the natural lichens are, are flourishing and um, and really the environments are becoming more pristine um, 
kind of back to the pre-polluted numbers. And, um, and so in areas where 95 to 100 percent of the moths were dark, they are actually decreasing to around 30 percent max and often in a lot of the places where all of these black moths were originally found, um, the areas are actually dropping all the way back to zero, uh, which is a good news for um, obviously air quality, but is a good news for uh, this particular moth as well. Okay, So good news. Due to environmental policies in Europe, air pollution has been greatly reduced and the populations of peppered moths are evolving back to pre-pollution levels. We are saving the moths one air particulate at a time. Um, I think that's it for this video. Hopefully you can see now how uh, natural selection even can happen really quickly. Evolution is not one of those things that really takes millions of years like a lot of people think. We in our lifetime can or within 100 years, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 years, you can see uh, in a case study like this that, that a few environmental changes or environmental policies can actually make a population evolve from a melanic farm in this case back to the original wild type farm um, just by changing up some, in, you know, some human impact type practices. Um, the fact that we can see that population change over time is again evidence to suggest that evolution is a, a legit theory um, and is, is one that is really kind of widely accepted and really supported at this point. So that's it. Bring your questions to class. I'll see you.